Just you put me in my toes, Grace. <laughs> Um, and Vincent's background, through the work that we're doing with Sugarman, you're going to see our students and our kids, and this is a preview of our website to come. Cool. Our students, our kids, our teachers. Thank you. Uh, Madam President, board members, faculty and staff, definitely appreciate the opportunity to speak. Uh, the presentation I have here is going to be very abbreviated and very different. Um, <laughs> And um, a lot of rationale behind us. You already have the uh, information in this packet, so I'll be referring to that uh, throughout the presentation. And I know you all love numbers because spreadsheets are fine. They <laughs> are. As Grace mentioned, I uh, had the liberty of um, basically taking some pictures off of our, our recent photo shoots. You hear, I think this is um, Colin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And for um, uh, students here at ACES. So enjoy the pictures while we go through on um, uh, the numbers here. Right. Um, I just want to express gratitude and blessing for being able to work here in this community. I have never thought I'd be here in historic South Central serving this population and community. And I will say, though, that it is priceless. Uh, you can't add any dollars or cents to it. You get to see this day in and day out. You get to see the lives and what we can do here in this community um, on a day-to-day -day basis and what powerful way to be able to communicate that message. Um, I've been working with private schools, schools in general for a decade. And um, one of the biggest dichotomy is that finances are here and hard and education is here. And how do you marry the two? It's like I married my wife. My wife's a teacher. I'm you know, we, and we always have interesting conversations every night. But I always go to this picture here. Well, I, I don't always go to this picture. <laughs> this is kind of the memories that, that, that burn in my mind. I also have an opportunity to work with great staff for Lizelle and Michelle, especially this past month of uh, really picking up the, uh, the gap um, here in this organization. We, um, our staff, it's not just Lizelle and uh, Michelle. But also Big John, Garcia, and many others that really um, picked up and stepped in um, during this time here at the schools. And I'm grateful that Rob's here because I fully have resigned from being here. <laughs> 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 so here's my overview. We're just going to go over three simple presentations. Again, it's in your board packet. 11 months financials ending May 2019. The five-year capital expenditure plan, as requested by the board members, uh, board uh, from last uh, meeting, and a three-year operating budget cash flow that's been updated from our last presentation, our last time together. Mr. Warren uh, Powell, or uh, well, thank you. See, it's, it's great for me to have these pictures because they're not just face the names. Mm -hmm. And these are great pictures, by the way. So how do we do financials? For 11 months ending May 2019. What I want to do, I want to, for you to refer to the slide page two and three in your financial package. And just high level, I wanted to start here by our ADA. Some really interesting stats that I want to point out. Although our ADA percentage was 93% on average for the entire year, that actually accounts for the blip that we had back in January for a due to the work stoppage. You oh. take that out, our ADA was actually 95%. Decent, right? Uh, but we obviously, there's more and more room for improvement. We started the year in total enrollment of 1799 students. We ended the year at 1767. That's an attrition of less than 2%. Again, pretty good numbers if you look at it. But there's always room for improvement here, as especially if we look uh, when it comes to dollars and cents. Our ADA uh, fluctuated. Um, about four four percent over the years. We, we started strong, as you can see here, and obviously we have opportunities here. Just making sure we, we end the year strong, getting our kids through the doors, healthy and um, and um, um, happy uh, to be at school. Anecdotally, I have a story. Uh, 
Okay. I went on a little mini vacation in October. I took my kids. My wife forgot to call the school, and next thing you know, sure enough, you get the call from the school. Did your, is your son okay? He's supposed to be in school. I'm like, cool, oh, hurry. Then later on, I got my wife dropped the file, I was sending it to my all because he ate me. Seriously. But again, these are opportunities here because as we look for um, uh, for future growth, here's opportunities where we can really serve our kids in a much better way by providing the followers, providing the uh, the care and the, the um, services to make sure the kids are healthy. You know, we don't necessarily need the, <laughs> the cheeks and seats. Uh, we need to make sure our community is doing very well. So the ADA, again, translates into the bottom line. Um, on page two in the packet here, uh, I provide a, an executive summary of our financial performance for 11 months. Nothing's really changed since our last, um, since our last board meeting. Um, the same variances are still the same variances. Um, just a couple of things to point out. Funding, again, has been affected because of the ADA. Our LCSF funding has uh, been coming a little short over the year. Our, our federal funding is going to be a little short. That's actually because of timing. We had um, changes in our food services to where some of our reporting got, we're a little behind on, but we'll catch up on that. As far as the biggest expenditures, our other operating expenditures are going to be unfavorable $1.8 million to the budget. That is large due partly because of uh, staffing or the work stoppage, higher than expected substitute, substitute coverage, coverage for spend needs, and unplanned legal costs. And as I'm moving forward, as I'm having more of a heavier hand, uh, more involved hand uh, with the budgeting process, uh, those things will be obviously analyzed and and um, um, you know, just making sure we're doing our due process and, and controlling our costs. Um, I'm going to cite Mr. Dr. Baines. He's been instrumental in identifying our SPED cut needs and helping us actually staff a lot of our SPED um, special education positions so that we're actually bringing it all in house, which is great because although it's additional um, overhead, uh, people account, um, it really helps us save on cost overall. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Pages three, four, five are just your standard um, balance sheet income statement. I'm not going to talk any racial metrics here because uh, um, I, I kind of laughed this morning. We, we were blowing out of metrics um, <laughs> from a financial performance. Um, once the recession comes, I'll start talking about those more in depth, mm -hmm. but we'll save those for later. Okay, six, again, um, here's a little the, uh, attendance to the ADA for your reference. Any questions? Capital expenditure plan. Pages seven and eight in the binder is the five-year capital plan. This is in working with Thomas Pitch, Tom Lu, and Andrew Robles in uh, in respective departments. We sat together and I told him to spend money. Spend, 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 spend. With a reason. Um, we're, what we're going to do, we're going to take a tiered approach. We're going to try to spend starter costs over five years. Basically, what that allows us to do is be more prudent and more fiscally responsible in our capital expenditure plans. All the projects that we have here that pertain to capital expenditures are listed here. It's not necessarily set in stone. These are you know, by no means um, 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 what we're going to do. This is just a, for planning purposes. Obviously, as we go through the year, some things are going to rise to the top. Some, some things are going to be deferred till next year or following years. But I think this finally gives us a snapshot of how to really address one of the board's concerns about financial stability and longevity. That we're actually planning to get ahead of ourselves so we can take care of things like a chiller or an HVAC unit going out or making sure we have the appropriate one-to-one -one technology for our teachers. It also looks at things like uh, mercy plants, uh, freezers, uh, convection ovens for, for food, replacing water, drinking waters, 
uh, elevator, rep elevators, and so forth and so on. Part of the things that I'm, what I'm trying to um, push here in the capital expenditure plan is not, let's not look at it as replacing cost. Let's look at it as more as an investment and or initiatives. Because as we move forward into the 21st century, we have to take more of an initiative approach because those investments marry our education plans. We want our students to be 21, 21st century learners. So we got to give them 21, 21st century tools. So we don't have anything in here for new construction or some of the things we've been talking about. Correct. Because those things are those things are actually kind of a special special list that you know we'll develop later. But at least for now, that I can now reasonably plan for the next five years with appropriate cash flow on making sure we have the plans and the plans in place to to uh, to execute these plans. And we is there uh, these numbers just kind of estimates, or do we is, is it what consensus is? These yeah. numbers are good, are they conservative or are they? They're kind of in, in the middle. Okay. Um, and especially you know it's a very ambitious plan as you can see. You know, I'm, I'm trying to project to spend 2.2 million dollars just the next year alone. So uh, for the next few board meetings, you're going to see tons of proposals coming through. We're, we're going to um, uh, take these plans and start doing um, our due diligence and present it to the board before we have execution. Um, Vinti, as you requested, we looked at the roofs uh, just to make sure we, we have... Um, Jim? I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you did. Uh, we looked at the roofs. You know, we want to make sure we have total cost. Because you know we don't want to come up on year 29 and say, oh, we got to replace the roofs. And uh, surprisingly, uh, Tom can fill me in if I'm incorrect here, but our roofs are actually in pretty good condition, and we're um, in some cases in mid-year life, you know, mid-year life cycle of these roofs. Now that's without saying you know we can obviously do more um, uh, better things with um, some of those um, you know capital costs, but. You know, as long as I um, put away, as long as um, the school puts away forty thousand dollars for the next ten years, we'll have appropriate money uh, funds to replace the roof should we need to. So, those, so, um, so, all right. So, people talk about reserves, and some of those reserves have a dedication to them, correct? Right. And some are not dedicated. So is that what you're talking about? Right. Okay. Any, a capital reserve uh, should always, you know, you should have a plan like this. Yep. And you know, I need, you know, a, a, I have a football field through um, 10 bands and, or whatever, you know, and that's going to cost X amount of dollars. I need to reserve Y amount of dollars. And, and that's the plan behind it. So yeah. when people look at our reserve, they go, oh my gosh, you're <laughs> such a big reserve. And, and it's not all available. Okay, I just want to be clear. Uh, it, the funds are not earmarked as a legal matter. Like if we, if we, as for a budget, for budget purposes, if we're saying forty thousand dollars a year are going into our operational reserve, it's not really an op. Well, let's say it's an operational reserve. It's not really, but okay. But it's sitting there, yeah. so we can use for the roof later. Right. If if there's something that happens where we need the forty grand, we don't have to use it for the roof. Right. right. So right. I just want to be careful about our terminology. Right. We're not earmarking dollars here. No. What we are saying is, is that it's there to help us replace the roof when we need it. And so we can justify having the size of an operational reserve that we have because of a bunch of deferred maintenance and capital improvements that we need to make and whatever it is, right? Right. Um, you know, look, frankly, we're supposed to have an operational reserve to run the school for at least three months, right? So we got a chunk of money. If there's some crisis, we got to run the school, we got nothing coming in. And then we got other things that we're going to use it for. And then there's something left over that we have to figure out how we want to invest. So it was the LAUSD issue, you know, when when they said, "Oh, you have all of this yeah, reserve," yeah, yeah. and they said, "It's not all of it totally Correct. available." That was my point. That, that's right. Okay. Thank you for the card. Yeah, and also on the income, it's reduced by the the amount that we're allocating for reserves. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. So I took a look. Um, right there, Holly Hartman. Uh, music department, kind of cool. Um, so I took a look at the uh, Ed Code as far as uh, what the reserves are. Um, our reserves are actually set by board precedent. It's not actually a legal requirement. It's actually, we have to set aside money uh, uh, per the Ed Code, but 5% is actually our designation. 
right? So which is really interesting because I, I thought it was a 5% was a hard number, but apparently it's not. So, um, in fact, I'll stick with this slide. Five percent of what was that total income? Huh? Again, that's our designation. Could be total income, could be net income. Or it could just be a dollar, dollar amount every year. I think I think the problem is, as I understand state law and AB 1200, you need to budget a contingency every year based Correct. on the size of your budget. And right. The percentage goes down as the budget gets huger, which may or may not make sense. But there's nothing that requires a reserve, per se, as we would think of it. So it really gets rolled into contingencies and that the carryover every year where districts get in trouble is when the carryover is negative. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Right. I was when there isn't a carryover, they, yeah. they, they spend more than they bring in. Yeah. Um, but in a, in, a, in a charter school, which is a different entity to some extent though, than a, than a school district, um, the logic of having reserves to finance your needs makes a lot of sense, right? So that's, that's why we have them. Exactly. But it's different than a school district would have. So I appreciate you bringing that up because uh, Larry and I had conversations about uh, rebooting our finance committee. Uh, and hopefully we, we can get uh, those meetings off the ground. And then those finance committees will actually be kicking the tires uh, and really researching and figuring out what their appropriate reserve levels are. Um, this is the same slide that we had last board meeting. I don't think we have a cash problem at this point, but if we're not careful, we can actually be in an invert position uh, fairly quickly. Um, so the reserve uh, <coughs> conversation that we can uh, delegate to the finance committee to really dig deep and figure out appropriately how we should fund future projects uh, for the school. Um, but with that said, uh, that goes into my projected for your budget, which is the following page. And the visor. Same uh, slide from our same presentation from the last board meeting. Uh, I refined the numbers based on our recent hiring changes. Um, and I took a certain liberties here because part of my responsibility is also making sure we control and cut costs. Um, and not necessarily from the cost, you know, cutting, cutting costs like, you know, let's buy uh, two erasers for every four students type of thing. Um, <laughs> but it's really um, a really thoughtful way of taking initiatives and seeing how we can be innovative in providing the right resources at a more efficient use. Um, I've been trained, fortunately trained, um, in previous lives that, you know, the goal for CFOs and uh, for a uh, finance uh, business office uh, for schools is you want to cut costs and pay your teachers more. And that's going to be my goal my mantra moving forward. And that's what, that's the heart behind this budget here. That, you know, it's going to be thoughtful in our budget, uh, budgeting mm -hmm. to really use the boundaries and, you know, cutting costs. I keep telling people I'm allergic to paper because we have laptops and, you know, and smart pads and smartphones. And, and so those are some really innovative ways and really cool programs that we can do that uh, really cut those um, Oh, Just want to point out that you know, when we're thinking about cutting costs and paying teachers more, I'm all for paying teachers more. On the cutting cost side of things, I think we should be mindful of our goals and like it's not just a matter of cutting costs, but where do we invest, right, as opposed Absolutely. to just pure cost cutting. Absolutely. Yeah. So can I ask you a quick question? Absolutely. You you put your um, print where your mouth is, uh, when you talk about paying teachers more, you, the, the, the certificated salaries line goes up $2 million. Yes. How much of that is um, additional salary for existing teachers and how much of that is additional teachers? Um, my assumptions are always 2% to commiserate with COLA increases. Okay. The LCF has um, does over the next three years. So surprisingly, all governor, all governor Houston did was pump the super club up next year. Right. Um, so I just use that as my metric. Okay. Um, so yes, uh, an appropriate increase should always be a two percent. Because okay. again, so 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 then when you move two million dollars from one year to the next, that's a lot of money. Yep. So does it mean we'll have more teachers? No, not necessarily. Okay. Just just check it. Okay. And that includes whatever we agreed to <coughs> in January with the teachers the as well, right? Yeah. Correct. Okay. So it's part of the collective bargaining. That's fine. Both are good things. I'm just checking with the with the, with the yeah. What the combination is, I'm, I'm with you. I agree. You can never pay teachers more. You can always pay teachers more. It's a good thing. So absolutely, that that will be our, our 
first central core mission again to commiserate with board goals and expectations. Great. Any questions about the budget and um, any um, clarifying things? So based on your forecast, we got we're at, we're uh, forecasting the end of fiscal 2019. We're going to be seven hundred thousand dollars plus to the good. For the next few years, our operating budget is going to be flat in terms of adding to the net to net asset. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And then in 2021-22, we're going to be two hundred twenty-five thousand and change to the good, right? Yes, and obviously so, we'll probably out in three years projection. That's I understand. Hard. And the, we get the negative numbers just when you, you take our net asset, you say 5% is restricted because we're calling that a, a true reserve. We're not going to touch, right? I'm sorry, I'm reading this right. You are. Okay. It's okay by me. Questions? <laughs> Great shirt. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's all right. Right. I love the pink pig, by the way. They're all doing it. Yeah, they did a great job. Yeah, good idea. It's okay. I like them. Great. Okay, so we're going to go back to um, the LCAP. Okay. And we do have a, a fairly robust uh, closed session. So. Yeah, basically, um, we've already approved the LCAP and the DLAC recommendations through the consent items, but we did want to kind of bring forward just a few highlights and identify these um, and bring forward the actual uh, recommendations from the DLAC. So it should go by fairly. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, just the overall health. Oh, that's the DLAC recommendation. See, this, this is one of the tough things about having each individual school have its own petition, its own LCAP, because even though there is quite a number of overlap, there's still these things that are individual and specific to each school. Um, yeah. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> yes. Maybe do you have your your um, badge to get in? That'll work. That'll work. <laughs> I, I can basically talk to some of it, and I don't know if you get one. We'll get you. Okay. Okay. Make sure that all the board has the um, captain's list. Peter doesn't have. Thank you. Thank you. I just got in my just came over. <laughs> yeah. okay. Got your name on it. There. I love technology. Um, so maybe um, until some point that um, I'll just kind of speak to a few things. Um, I wanted to give you a brief introduction before the people come up and actually um, talk to their individual schools around the LCAP. I wanted to give you some, the LCAP has kind of changed a little bit this year. There are actually four different pieces that had to go into the LCAP. The only one that actually has to be approved this year are the LCAP. But there's also something that's now called an LCAP federal addendum um, that you might have seen in, in your packet. Um, but the LCAP federal addendum, they added that on because they didn't feel like the LCAP addressed um, our unduplicated peoples enough. So they wanted to understand how our federal dollars, our categorical dollars, are really being used to support our homeless, our foster youth, our immigrant youth. So that's what the LCAP federal addendum is. They'll, they'll kind of get into all of the details of it, but I wanted to let you know that that's one of the additions. There's also something called an LCAP budget summary for parents. Um, because the LCAP is such a huge document, um, it, it, it's um, real dense in, in some of its reading and such, um, uh, the California Department of Education wanted to ensure that 
parents were able to kind of see at a glance, at a summary level, um, how the dollars were being spent. So that's also something that's included. It doesn't have to necessarily be approved by the board because it is still in, um, uh, it's still part of our actual LCAP. Um, the other piece was our LCAP stakeholder survey that we talked about uh, a couple meetings ago, maybe. Um, um, so the LCAP um, survey was used as um, a large piece of how we um, looked at our actions and services and made revisions. Um, so in our last meeting, we talked about broad courses of study, we talked about um, saving the campus, we brought to you um, a lot of the, the successes and the areas of need um, based on our stakeholders. So we used that um, as a huge piece of, of how we updated and revised our actions. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to share before um, we invite Ms. Rodri up here to, to um, start with ACES is that the actions and services, we had about 46 actions and services in our LCAP. And as we looked at some of the other schools and, and dug into um, like Long Beach Unified and Redondo and some of these other you know, large school districts, we noticed that they have like four goals and maybe 20 actions and services yeah. um, to kind of summarize what they were doing at the school. So working along, I don't know what Vincent is like, but working alongside with Vincent, um, he and I um, streamlined our actions and services. Um, we noticed that there was some redundancy in some of the things that we were um, um, speaking of in our in our LCAP. And so we really took, took time to focus, uh, take a strategic focus and streamline some of our action services to make it a, a bit more um, manageable um, and efficient for budgeting purposes. So I want to thank Vincent, I want to thank Susan, I want to thank Francis, I want to thank Rosie for the work that um, we did on putting this all together. I'm going to invite Susan up to talk about our agents. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam President and board members. And I'm going to move this because uh, as a teacher, I'm like, everybody can be more. And I can see the PowerPoint on this side for one more year. Um, with LAUSD. 
Um, and so we took the idea of math and literacy and how do we um, invite parents to come with kids. So, and I should have some nice pictures to show you, but it was great because parents came with the kids and then through a book and reading it, we were able to um, show how math is an activity that parents can do because math has become very complicated um, or a little bit more difficult to understand when a parent looks at the homework, well, how do I help my child with it? So we uh, were working with the parents to give them ideas and suggestions of these are ways that you can do it, even if it's a book and it's an illiteracy, there's math around us and this is how we can um, help our kids. Um, sometimes I feel like parents feel like I don't know how to help my kids, right? I don't, maybe they don't speak English or I don't understand it. And so our job is to try to say there are many things that you're already doing that are very supportive of your kids. And we want you to continue doing it. And here's some more ways um, that you can help kids. Um, big uh, focus on mathematics this year um, and looking at different uh, strategies, instructional strategies. Um, again, it's exciting to work um, with all the principals and actually walk through all of the classrooms all of us together, all the way from elementary school, all the way to high school to see, well, what does it look like in kinder? What does it look like in middle school? What does it look like in, in high school? So that we can get better aligned with that. And dialogue is a really huge piece of mathematics um, nowadays and to be able to explain your, your reasoning and what you're thinking. Um, so that's an overview of our highlights. And then the needs um, is a continue increase in systematic professional development. Um, we want our teachers and our students to build their conceptual understanding of mathematics. Sometimes teachers, I mean, I know for myself, math was not my, no, I shouldn't say that, wasn't my favorite thing, but I recognize that. And so helping teachers feel more comfortable with mathematics um, and how to, to work through that with kids. Um, and then using the different scaffolds um, that we have for our English learners so that we can help them increase their performance on uh, tasks, both in ELA and math. Provide more literacy resources for levels reading. So I'm so glad to hear about the budget. Thank you. <laughs> uh, provide more meaningful and a variety of opportunities for parent involvement and workshops. I think we have fallen off in the last several years with parent workshops and involvement. So we really want to look at how can we support um, our parents for the things that they're not just asking for, but um, I want to say three need for. Um, so there's a really great need to uh, to build a better connection with parents um, and support them here at the school so that they can help. Um, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Francis, Mr. Redding, you guys are getting real formal, Madam President. <laughs> <laughs> would you mind highlighting, Mr. Redding? Would you mind highlighting just the ones that are specific to TAS, different from what ACE has brought for? Yeah, um, so I think they, uh, the partnerships and the connections with community stakeholders is a big uh, highlight here at TAS. Our partnership with My Voice Matters, um, yeah. the journalism and writing initiative at the school site, um, really highlights the area of ensuring that uh, we're providing uh, extracurricular resources and opportunities for our community and our kids, which I think is really important, and partnerships with universities. Um, and some of the highlights, we had a, uh, a really high level of satisfaction in a school and teacher communication that includes the front office, our teachers, to the administrators. So that was a, one of our highest ranked areas. Um, and I, those are, are similar to ACES. Uh, some of our identified needs, um, obviously we want to continue our systematic uh, professional development across the schools. Uh, providing more courses and activities is a big one. It's identified both by staff and by parents, and it's being constantly talked about. Um, that the general consensus is that providing the core uh, instructional courses is not enough. They want music. They want access to different activities uh, to increase interest and uh, create more excitement, create a better culture at the school site. Um, <clears throat> Increased monitoring of LTL, uh, the long-term English learners growth is going to be really important. Um, those students are generally very, they struggle at the school site. Um, the introduction of NGSS science is going to be a, a big identified need in the upcoming year. Space on the campus, 
been a challenge. Um, expansion of the after school clubs and activities, and that follows along the line of, of having a broader course of study and access to different coursework and activities. Both sides. Francis, uh, when students graduate or matriculate from ACES as sixth graders over to seventh grade, what kind of support do they get so that they maintain their bilingual opportunities that they've had at ACES? Uh, last year, we started off um, offering Spanish as an elective. Um, it was, we, I met with the ACES parents and it was a really big item. Um, the idea that we wanted to evolve that program, let the ACES parents know that we would be enrolling their kids into a uh, Spanish classroom. Uh, this year, we're expanding that program to, to the extent we could only allow students one elective <clears throat> for our schedule this year. So the, the problem with that is, so if we had a student who had an ELD class they needed to take, we could take Spanish. Yeah. We were able to resolve that this year so that now all the ACES students can go into the Spanish elective program and they're able to have two electives. And so this allows for the continuity of the program. And we're also partner, partnering with Wallace and Amber High School uh, so that those students can be tracked. And I know this year we had a number of test students go straight into half uh, Spanish too. Excellent. And I'm sure many of those are ACES, ACES families and kids. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Always worried about, not worried, but concerned about the support that kids maintain their bilingual frame once they leave ACEs. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. So highlights for WAD. Um, so one of the highlights we have is um, we just want to build a positive school culture um, for students. We had about um, so um, by increasing the STEM program, the programs like that first is, um, and the other thing that we did this year was we actually increased the number of um, consultation for EL students um, from 7.9% to 27%. It may not be able to sustain that because it was a one-time deal, um, but we're definitely working towards making sure that our students are being classified as well. Um, and then the other thing is um, increasing the number of um, um, Rigorous, I guess I could say, um, um, LA Trade Tech dual enrollment classes with our students. So, like I said um, earlier, we're increasing that number as well. But we're um, doing classes like um, political science. Um, I think we have one of our that's going to be sign language. And um, so, those are more difficult classes. Um, and then also, one of the needs that we have, some of the needs that we have is um, our um, ADA was only 91%. So, we are looking at how can we increase that number this year. Um, one of the things that we need to build in place is the MTSS. We just have a dean, an academic, academic dean that's coming in, and she's going to help. Um, What's the MTSS? A multi-tier system of support. Thank you. Sorry. Um, multi-tier system support, and then the our academic dean is going to be working with. Is that like RTI? Back in the day. RTI, back in the day. RTI and PPIS is part of that. Okay, good. Thanks. Um, and so we're going to work with Dr. Bates. And okay, then, sorry for the uninitiated. Uh, <laughs> See, we need a glossary still. So, um, what is it? So multi like, system, like the second grade. system of support is basically um, looking at, um, and, and we're just developing our understanding together in terms of what that means. My understanding is, is that we're developing different level of support for each student that are at different levels. So tier one would be those students who are, you know, they're coming to school. What are your basic needs? And then tier two are kids who are who may need additional support, counseling, um, referrals to. Different Services, things like that. So, oh, yeah, right. so, um, so we're, we're approaching students where they are. Exactly, and we're identifying their needs, and then um, providing the services that we need to assist them. There's, there's two, it. there's two. It's a pyramid, it. and there's two sides. One is academic, the other is social. Got it. Okay. And we're working on both. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so the other need that we had is um, increasing our SBAC scores. Um, so that is something that we'll be working on, and again, looking at the academics as well. And then also making sure that our graduates, like I said earlier, are graduating not only um, preparing for college, but making sure they're successful. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or? Oh. Okay. Good deal. So, um, 
the last presentation is actually in your executive summary, and everybody here read their executive summary, including the CLAP recommendations that they had for the board. Um, were there any questions regarding our DLAC recommendations? Where would the executive <laughs> summary be? The executive summary <coughs> is consent item number five, the ah. strict English learner advisory oh, okay. recommendations oh, yeah. for the board for each of the different schools. Those are sent out in yeah. advance. Yeah. Okay. Good. Terrific. No other questions then. Right. Okay. So at this point, we can adjourn to closed session. Okay. Did we, was the consent item for X ed in here in the, um, yes, it was. It it was it was it was okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go into closed session at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And, um,